Hi guys, Tiffany here. Welcome to my tiny blocks. That's right. Tiny blocks. <laughs> so if you're new to my channel, head down there, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, get notifications when I'm live, and don't forget to like and share my videos. So I have the screen on yet, but as soon as it is, then I will get to what I'm getting to. I know I'm weird today, right? I'm hoping that the internet works today because, well, yeah. Anyway, so this is not a normal time that I'm on, but I had to come on because I'm making tiny blocks. So here is what we're making. If you can tell, it is a tiny block. You see that tiny block? Let me bring my tiny block closer. So let's get a closer look at my tiny block. This is a Jacob's Ladder. And it is a tiny block. <laughs> it is made with one inch squares. Look at that. So I've made two of them. And if you hold them together, it looks like the photo in the beginning of this and creates a really cool look. So we are making tiny blocks. And I'm gonna show you how. But we're gonna start off by sitting my butt back down again. And we're gonna start with assembling the four patches. So each Jacob's Ladder block requires four, or I mean five four patches. Five four patches and four half square triangles, okay? What we're gonna do is, okay, so this is all leftovers from another quilt and I was like, oh, I'm not gonna throw those batiks away. Let's make something tiny. Um, so I have one inch squares of my background and that just hurt my elbow and one inch squares of my color and I am going to hook them together like a four patch. There's one thing to making tiny blocks though that you need to understand they're tiny so it's a little bit more concentration needed to keep these together and you can't use pins um, so if you shake like I do it makes it a little bit harder and takes a little bit longer but it does work and um, also, for mine, I'm doing a scant quarter inch, which is less than the full quarter inch seam, purposely because these are so tiny and I still am trimming. Here's my little block before trimming. I am still trimming them down because I need them to be exactly the right size to get the exactly right size for everything to line up because um, here's another thing about tiny quilts, tiny blocks. You need to press all the seams open or else these things will not lay flat. So as you can tell, all of my seams are wonderfully pressed open, which is something I don't do. But if you want a nice flat block, you need to press them open. So that's what I'm doing here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to bring the camera nice and close to Z machine so you can watch. I should have just put this right next to me in the first place so you can watch me sewing tiny blocks. I'm going to zoom that in, turn you this way, and you're going to see how putting these little tiny blocks together come to play. And I'll read comments while I'm assembling my tiny blocks. So if you need five four patches per tiny block, you need to ha <coughs> have ten sets of um, two pieces, one of your background and one of your color. So I'm going to do 20, I'm going to run 20 through because I'm just going to do two blocks at once. So we're going to run 20 little four patches through. And while I am doing this, I will read 
Once again, I'm using a scant quarter inch. I have my stitch length set at 1.2, so that way these little tiny blocks do not come apart. So let's see who's here. Hi, Kim. Hi, Vivian. Hi, Karen. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Dawn. Hi, Linda. Um, hi, June. I go tiny. Scratch on. Hi, June. Hi, BJ. Um, hi, Robbie. All right, guys, and everybody's saying hi. So, all right, let's start this little thing. And what is helping me with this little project and pressing my seams open is my wonderful gift from T at T Quilts. Can you see that? She sent me a presser, and it's purple. The little handheld presser for seams, as well as she sent me the seam ripper and stiletto combo. And she sent me a card, a wonderful card right here. This is the beautiful card she sent me with a fairy on it. It's so adorable. And a little special note inside to thank me and recognize my um, contributions to the quilting community on YouTube. Um, I may not actively view your chats but know that you have my support so she supports me is what she's saying if it matters lol I'm sure you've seen the pretty sewing notions I've been selling um, I know that you've got to make your choices when you spend your funds so I'm giving you a set um, and hope that you uh, will enjoy uh, using them love tea at tea quilts so this is what tea sent me and this little pressing tool even though I don't think I'm holding it correctly tea you're gonna have to like do a video on how to hold it correctly <laughs> I'm using this um, to press them uh, if I'm holding it correctly or not either way it's helping so um, yeah and if I need the stiletto at least I have that now and I have a seam ripper which I haven't really needed because these are so tiny they are not needed um, unless I screw up, obviously. So, let's sew 20, 40, we're doing 20, 40, no, 20, because I said 10 per. 20, 10 per. So I'm going to sew 20 of these, and I'm going to make sure that they are right sides together. It's really hard to tell with boutiques. And I'm just going to sew them right sides together. Again, you can see that I shake, so you can tell that... If you have the shakes, this is going to be hard for you. I'm going to bring some of these right here. And just like carefully line them up. Mine aren't exactly one inch. They're just the little end cutoffs. But I'm just going to use them anyway. Because like I said, we're going to be trimming these down. Oops, let's go this way. i got to make sure that they're right sides together. And again, I'm using a really tiny stitch length for this. I'm just going to lay a ton of these out. I'm going to add some more color though. And I'm just going to stick a ton on top. Like this. Right sides together. I'm just going to like pre put these squares on here <laughs> as best as I can. Right sides together because they are so small. It kind of helps to just be a little bit organized. And then you can just run them through. You know, so we're making these tiny, tiny, and I'll bring this block up so you can see what we're making here. Put that right there, the miniature Jacob's ladder. I'm going to take all these down for now. You guys pretty much know I'm using um, one inch squares, one inch by one inch squares. They might not be exactly one inch, but they're close enough, close enough for me. I'm trying to give myself an equal amount. So here would be number five. Number six. This would be seven. Eight. Nine. And this would be ten for block one. Because we're making two blocks. One more. These make little 
three and a half inch blocks or three inch finish. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So this would be twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So I'm putting all the rest of these right sides together real quick so that I can sew them through. Make sure they're right sides together, Tiffy. Or it does not work properly. Although it's hard to tell with both my background and my um, fatigues. And it would also help, even though I'm using this press wooden presser thingy, it would help if you had a miniature iron. Because I was pressing these with the bigger iron that I have, my little cordless, and let me tell you, it is so hard because you burn yourself, consistently burn yourself. Alright, so here is 20 of these, and I'm going to go ahead and snip them apart. I have my little snipper thing, but this works too, only because I'm just going to make two blocks while we're on this live, and I'm going to hold myself to that, two blocks. This is definitely a little stress relieving project here. So what I'm going to do, for those that are new to anything quilting, is I'm going to open this up and I'm going to press this seam open. I'm going to use this little wooden thing. If you don't have this, just use your fingernail. And I'm going to press the seam open like that. And I'm just going to do that to every single one of these, which this is probably the part, so see you can use your fingernail. This is probably the part that takes the longest because after this I go and press them so they lay even more flat than what I already have going on here. So yeah, this is definitely, um, they are very small. I hate to do that on mine to press open. Okay, I saw Robbie. Lisa, hi Lisa. Mm, so sweet of tea. Yes, definitely very awesome. Um, I appreciate the wonderful thought of me and my channel and now she knows that I'm definitely using it. <laughs> uh, whether I'm using it correctly or not, that's another story, but, um, pretty awesome. Uh, hi, Linda. Hi, Katrina. All right, so I'm just going to press all these and then try to read the comments while I do this part, but then I'm going to go over to the iron and I'll just turn the camera to face the iron. Um, and press all these with the iron so that they are laying nice and flat, but it's going to take me a minute to even get that far. Thank you, Kim, for the thumbs up reminder. Okay, so I'm just, this is why I chose only to do two blocks, because this is very time consuming. If you have a lot of time on your hands, um, I could have a 24 patches of a regular size done so fast, but these little tiny guys, mm -mm -mm, they take so much longer. Um, it took me almost an hour to make those other two blocks, so that's why I figured I'm only going to make two on a live stream because it'll probably take me almost an hour to do that. And with talking and stuff, it'll take an hour online. So, yeah. What's everybody else up to today? Anybody else sewing or quilting or anything? So I'm just kind of like rubbing this little tool on here very carefully like. Um, trying to put the little pointer part of it, of the wood press, um, a little bit more harder in that area on it. So I'm hoping that's correct, but if not, T will tell me. But I'm just laying it on there like that so that I can get these seams to stay wonderfully open. 
Come on. And if I can't split it with my fingernails, you could always split it with the tools that you're using. Um, if you have a tool of any kind. Um, I think the back sides of things will work too to split seams open. My fingernail does not. There. No, 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 no. Come on. Fingernails. There we go. If you don't have a little fancy little tool, just finger press it until you get it to the iron like that. See, so you can just use your fingers until you get to an iron. These are so small. But I'm definitely having fun with it. I needed, I don't know, I just needed to take my mind off of everything and this is like the perfect thing to do it with is these little mini quilt blocks, which I'm in turn making a mini quilt with. But I will probably at least sew two a day or at least try to, but that's probably not gonna happen maybe two a week until this whole little project is done just to have a little side project. All right, so all of these are now pressed. So let's make sure I have 22, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oops, yeah, I lost count, screw that. Let's just take them over and press them flat. So I'm gonna lay these at the iron we're gonna turn the camera and you are zoomed in so that you can see these little blocks I'm gonna leave them facing actually I'm gonna put them facing down now so wrong sides down I'm gonna lay them all right here on my mat they should be flat enough like this I was doing it both ways earlier but this probably quickest. Just lay them all right here, making sure that that seam is staying open when you lay it down. And here's how I know I have 20 because I have four rows <laughs> of five, which is 20. All right, so I'm just going to lay these right here until my iron is fully warm. And I can't see comments at the um, complete second. And let's turn this just a little bit more right there. There we go. All right. They're warmed up. Let's give it some steam because we want these things to stay so very flat. And you can't slide across them because you don't want to pick them up because they're so small. If you were to slide around, just pick your iron up and press, pick it up, press till everything is super duper flat. Okay, and once you have all 20 for your two blocks of flat blocks, we're going to come back to the sewing machine and we're going to sew. So I'm going to pick all these up very carefully without distorting them or wrinkling them too much. And again, these are so small. I mean, you can pin if you want to try to with little tiny dinky pins, but that just seems ludicrous to me. <laughs> we're going to do it small. So this is the block again that we're going to be making. So I'm just going to leave it up there. So we're going to put these opposite now, just like this. Oops, my hand is in the way. So I'm going to take two of them, just like any four patch with two different colors. I'm just going to take them opposite, except instead of being able to snug any seams, now I'm just going to line up my seam line. So here's my seam line. I'm just going to line them up and hold them together with my fingers. Keep it right here, nicely held together with my fingers. Oops. And see, you have to like pick them up and move them several times if, if you don't lay it down just right. And then sew it down. So we're gonna go ahead now and opposite these. And so all these together, making 10 little tiny, 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 one and a half inch four patches. And try to mix these colors up really good. So again, I'm just lining up, let's hold this right here, this seam with this seam, right sides together, 
this is so hard about the pressing open but they're so tiny it's it's like impossible to just keep them together so I just hold them together until I set them down and just make sure everything stays aligned set it down it stays pretty nice all right let's match some pieces up just to get all these quickly done let's put those two together just two colors that are totally different together there we go it doesn't matter what color I'm not being really particular about that part I'm just sewing these together I just want to make sure everything stays lined up lined up pressed open and sewn together as correct as possible because they are so tiny and these are just the same you can chain piece these the same as any as you see as any other project <coughs> Oop, I'm missing comments okay we got Nina hi Nina love my block thank you Linda just got home from running errands the other Linda is watching me on the big TV awesome Patricia is here Wendy is here hello uh, I'm pressing fabric that has been on my table for a week and working on masks. That sounds like fun. That's why I'm doing this. It gives me something to do. Mm, let's see. Lisa just got home from work. Going to add pleats to a mask and really hope I'm done because I put everything else away. Oi! Yeah. I'm not doing any masks. Screw mask making. That's my own personal opinion. I am not making masks. I will make mini quilt blocks instead. <laughs> Alright, stay together little guys. I'm going for as close as possible of a matched seam. It, it's never going to be perfect. Um, just as long as it's as close as it can possibly be. Um, everyone's saying hi still. Hi. Um, I'm Leora for so many blocks on Leah Day's channel doing scrappy tiny nine patches of 1.25 inch blocks. Liking it. Relatively new to quilting and appreciate your videos. Thanks. Oh, awesome. Well, welcome, Leora. Um, Lisa, Will, or did you use starch? No starch because these are batiks and they lay so super flat anyway. So I didn't need the starch. I'm, I'm just there's no point in it especially since I don't really want to smell the stuff right now um, me too. I'm glad they enjoyed it PJ thanks I made a video and now I'm working on half square triangle blocks the best friend years ago named Leora um, I know two with the same I've never even heard of that name honestly <laughs> Uh, I probably have, I just don't remember, honest, just, I forget so many things. Hi, Bettina, uh, Kathleen, hi, Kathleen, keep being a friend, move, trying to get home to see y'all when I'm done, not hugs and I miss. Okay, we'll see you, hopefully. All right. All right, so I'm going to snip these apart. Tiffany going to TV to pause phone is shot dead. Hi, little bee cross. I hear it's not for me either. Yeah, I just don't want to do it. All right, so I'm going to snip all these apart now. So I should have 10 sets to make two blocks, you know. And we're going to open one up just so you can see. So let me hold that as steady as I can. You can see it's not perfect, but it's as best as I'm going to get it. Some of them, like, see this one? That's close. I mean, it's it's hit and miss if you're going to get them correct and accurate. Here's another one. It's, it's going to be a hit and miss, you know, with these. Because they're, they're uh, like, here's a really good one. It's because of the open seam and because they're so darn tiny. So again, before we go to the iron, we are going to open these up, open the seam, and they're now a little bit harder to open the seam because now there is a seam in the middle. We're going to do that same exact thing, rub this little tool on here, and open all of these seams up. Now you know why I chose to only do two blocks during the live stream, because 
this literally takes forever. I'm not trying to stretch or distort the block either in my process of doing this. That is not good. So you just want to hold it as best as you can while you rub this thingy my bobber on it or any other fingernails or tools that you might have. Little mini pressing. I want a little mini electric presser. The ones that are for applique like a, I think it's Clover that makes it. I was looking at it the last time I was in my local quilt shop and I was thinking about getting it and then I was like, nah, when do I really do applique? Well, it's not just for applique. You can do stuff like this with those mini irons. Just need a little mini ironing tray and bam, that would be so much easier <laughs> than trying to take and do this and then press with the big iron. So, especially if you don't have fingernails to split it open. I have some kind of fingernail right now, but not my normal length fingernails. That is doing the job. And again, you can use a stiletto to open them or the tool itself to open your seams as long as you can get them open. Very odd from what I normally do because I never open seams, but with this, you have to. Um, da, 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 da. I'm trimming up nine patches and houses. Ooh, fun June. Tiffany, okay, I saw that. Oh, hey, make this. Brenda, yes, I'm live, Brenda. Hello. Um, can I go with there? Tiffany, a trip to Oklahoma a week and a half ago. It's it is taking me until yesterday to feel like doing any sewing. Yeah, yeah. I went to the my appointment yesterday. I didn't really want to do anything, but I forced myself to because, well, I'm just in a. Oops, there's one more. I'm in a mode where I just need to make something. So this little dinky tiny little quilt that's going to be made out of these tiny blocks is going to be so awesome. All right, so now I'm going to go press these, and instead of turning the camera, I'm just going to leave you facing the um, sewing machine because it's only going to take two seconds to put some steam on these. Well, maybe it would be more steam if I actually was to um, put some water in the iron. But I'm trying to do this so I don't have time to put water in the iron. we will just get them as flat as possible. I'm only making two blocks, so this is going to be such an awesome little miniature quilt. Like, I love the Jacob's Ladder blocks, so this is definitely very fun to do in miniature form. All right, so let me bring these over now and show you the next step. Okay, so here's my little mini four patches. Now, what I need to do is make what's in the block is half square triangles. To achieve that, I was going to do a bigger number, but I already had pre-cut pieces from the other project. So I went with my two in, in, I have two inch squares, and I need four of them. So I'm going to take four of my two inch squares and four of my two inch um, background pieces. Okay, and what I'm going to do is leave that right there, but we're going to move my little um, four patches out of the way, and we are going to draw a line corner to corner, like any half square triangle, on the of my little pieces here. Okay, move those there. We're going to grab me a little ruler, my little mini ruler. I'm also going to use my little, my pen. Uh, for drawing on fabric, my friction pen, and I'm just going to oops, allow some room to have your head of your pen, and this table is definitely not for line drawing. Um, so I'm just going to draw a line from corner to corner, very carefully like, trying not to stretch or tug on this fabric because it's such a small block. Okay, and one more from that corner to that corner. You got to allow room. It's not really directly on the corners when I'm laying the ruler down because you have to add room for your um, pen. 
so make sure you do that. And now that I have done my line, um, let's see, where am I? Okay, whatever it is, this pressing stick helps to open the seam faster. Yes, it does. So it was very, 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 I'm very, very thankful for T to send this to me. And she sent it in purple. It totally is helping. Hi, Jim. Um, hi, Vicky. Um, let's see, hi to Vicky. Hi, June. Let's say hi. Uh, Brenda, I haven't made one in a while. Okay. So now what we're going to do is take my main color and then my background. And I'm going to lay these on here. I'm also going to going to remove my scant quarter inch chingamabobber that I'm using out of the way because I want to sew on both sides of my drawn line. And this is going to give us such tiny, tiny, little, tiny, tiny, little half square triangles. So we're going to sew a scant quarter inch, means the press, my foot, um, I don't know how well you can see, but there's the edge of the foot. I'm going to line this up with it. I'm actually sewing inside of that edge of the foot, but not too much, just ever so slightly. So I'm lining up my line to where I can't see it under the foot, and I'm just going to sew my very, 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 um, I think I'm out of bobbin, maybe. Okay. Look at that. No, I'm not. Why did that happen? Let's check my top. It's all this tiny sewing. I'm having tiny problems. Let's re-thread. Okay. Oops. Let's put that there. Can't get this in here today. I haven't had to re-thread all day. All right, let's try this again. I'm going to put my thingy down, and I'm going to sew just a hair close to the line. I'm going to turn it around. I'm, I would chain piece. I'm just showing you guys what I'm doing here. Okay, so normally there would be a line there, and you can see the line on this side. I sewed just closer to that line by a hair, just so that I could have plenty of room to... Um, trim my block down when that time comes. So then you can either rotary cut or you can scissor cut these lines, your um, seam open like this. And we're looking for one and a half inch blocks. So you can cut it with the scissors if you want. I would be very, very careful because this is on the bias so here is one little half square triangle for now and then we're going to open the other one and i'm just going to run it on here kind of just pushing that top without stretching anything and there's two for now the rest of them i'm going to chain piece real quick and then just use the rotary cutter. Um, Brandon is here. Hi, Brandon and Sandy, if you're here too. All right, so I'm just going to chain piece the rest of these now. Run them through. And again, all I did was sew a little bit closer. Here's if you could see. See my stitch, stitch line? It's just a little bit closer to my center drawn line, um, allowing me to have plenty, even though I'm trimming down, um, it's just going to allow me to have plenty of room to trim because these blocks are so small. I mean, we all use one and a half inch pieces, but I don't think we use one and a half inch um, half square triangles very often. <laughs> So I'm going to trim these with the, oops, I need those, um, with the rotary cutter real quick now. There's one. And one more. 
and then we will press these open and then also take this to the iron. Okay, so again, same thing. All right, Leora, we'll see you next time. I did come on during a time of day where everybody's either at work or something, but it's only because I had some extra time right now um, before things to get this done. So and come on live stream and hang out with you guys since my videos have been slacking in how many I usually have lately. I used to make videos almost every single day. Now it's once a week, maybe twice if you guys are lucky. <laughs> So here's your twice a week video and maybe I'll do some more. I'm kind of just going to force myself to make videos no matter how bad I feel just because I'm in a mood. <clears throat> Alright so here I'm just pressing these. I hope my iron didn't turn off. Nope it didn't. And then as soon as I get to the iron I'm going to carefully press them and then we're going to take these over to the trimming side. Come on, split, split. My fingernail wasn't getting this one. There we go. Another reason why I'm going to get so big frustrated making, trying to make videos in the next couple months if school has to, has to be online this whole time because it's definitely eating up my ability to have really almost good internet like I normally had. So. Get these down nicely. So sorry about that. If you guys lose me, just refresh your screens. And I cannot see if I'm out of um, signal either until I turn. All right, so let's take these wonderful little blocks here. I'm going to put some water in this because when I get to the next step, I'm definitely going to want steam. Let's just add some quick water. And spill it everywhere while we're at it. All right. All right, let's take you over to the trimming zone. So let's go for a little trip. Tip you down. Unzoom. There we go. Sorry for the wiggling. All right. So here's our little blocks. And move all that out of the way. So I'm going to grab my little four patches as well. I need my four patches and my half square triangles. And what we're going to do is, I'm hoping that this is good enough for you to see, is I'm going to take my little ruler and I'm going to line, because they're kind of wonky, as you can tell, I'm going to line my three-quarter of inch line. See this? on the line, okay? I'm gonna line the three quarter of an inch line right here in this section. So three quarters of an inch on both sides. And then I will, oops, not cut myself in this awkward position. I will trim two sides, turn it. I'm just barely trimming anything off and line up my one and a half, one and a half, the three quarter inch and the three quarter inch for a perfectly square one and a half inch mini block, which I need to start cutting them a different uh, direction. I gotta stand right here because I don't wanna hurt myself. All right, so we're gonna do that again. I'm gonna show you, I'm lining up my three quarter inch line and if it doesn't line up with the other side, just make sure everything else is lined up, but like this one is, as long as I have enough, i line up my other side, one and a half line, and my three quarter inch lines. And there we go. So let me trim all these down, all my little four patches. Trim. I know I'm using such a big, huge rotary cutter for such a small project, but um, I don't want to grab another one off the wall right now. So, and this one has a pretty sharp blade, so it gets it really good. How much are the irons with a water well? 
would not brace them. You mean the Panasonic iron? I actually don't know. Um, Teresa, one of the subscribers here, purchased that for me. I think they're like 70 or 60 or 70 dollars that iron, the Panasonic. Um, I can't tell you exactly what it is right now because I'm not standing near it, but it's a Panasonic iron. Okay, so see, I'm just taking little tiny slippers off. So, and if there's barely anything there, just work with it. Everything is lining up, barely taking anything off as long as it is nice and straight. Like I said, my blocks weren't, com my little squares weren't completely perfect. They were the ends of my um, latest project. So, this is why I chose to only make two blocks in this video because this literally takes forever to trim everything and so on and so forth because they're so I, I'm really starting to hate this school thing it is really really annoying me all right so where was I again 20 squares make one block 21 inch squares and then two cut into these makes that part. All right, make sure, make sure everything aligned nicely. I can't believe I did that. This is what I was talking about right there before I realized that the video was not connected. <laughs> I accidentally sewed them the, the wrong way, so I have to pluck it out and sew them the right way. Or we'll see. I'm going to trim this differently because this one didn't line up correctly on this side. There we go. Let's try this again. That was so wonky right there. There we go. That's better. All right, and one more. It's a good thing I had one already previously made so that I could show you guys what we were making. All right, one and a half inches is what they are being trimmed down to. I hope you guys heard everything I was saying. I don't know when the video cut out. All right, so all of my four patches are cut to size. Now let's do the half square triangles. They are on the bigger side, but that just allows you to be able to line everything up a little bit more accurately. So I'm gonna line up a little bit more accurately. So I'm gonna line my diagonal line on the diagonal, trim two sides, flip it, put my one and a half inch line on both bottom and top and line that diagonal up and trim it. So there's my one and a half inch piece. So it's just slivers that we're taking off and it works. And I, I'm not really looking at comments because I don't want to cut myself. I'm using a bigger um, blade than I need for this project. But I really just want to get these trimmed because I don't know how much longer I'm actually going to have video. This really, really sucks. Now you guys know that uh, this internet struggle is real. Every day when I try to watch other people's lives, I lose signal, consistently lose signal. It's highly annoying. All because school has to be online. And my son isn't even using internet for school. His is paper packets. Why couldn't everyone else do paper packets? Sorry. I know. I'm venting here kind of just, I don't know, depressing. Alright, so again we'll need four of these little half square triangles per block. Same with a big Jacob's Ladder though. Five four patches and four half square triangles. That's how it works. So you could make this bigger if you wanted. As long as your four patch size matches your half square triangle size then everything should line right up. These are just so fun to make because they're so adorable. So tiny. And it's fun too. It's definitely a little stress reliever. Well, if you have good internet, it's a stress reliever. <laughs> the bad internet is what's making me have issues. Well, it wasn't issues before I went live, I mean. 
It was perfectly fine. It was stress relieving, soothing and calming just to sit in here and sew my two little blocks. Because they're so cute. I'm hoping that I didn't lose signal. Oy, oy, oy. It better not. I'm like seriously trying to watch my screen while I cut, yet I'm not seeing any of the comments because I'm making sure that I'm not losing video. But before I start sewing, I'll check the comments. Alright, this is my last block anyway to trim. And now it's going to be time to lay them out. So I'm just cutting them down to one and a half inches. There we go. So I have eight half square triangles and ten Okay, it's back every time it says I'm live again and it starts recording again. So it'll be a consistent replay for those that want to just watch the replay because of the buffering. And I'm very sorry for that. But if those of you who want to bear with me, then bear with me <laughs> because I cannot control the internet right now. All right, now it's time to lay the mini block out. What I'm going to do is use this as my reference point, okay? So I have right here a half square triangle with my background color out facing away from me. Then I have a half square triangle with my other my dark color facing away from me. Then I have another four patch with my background color facing away from me. Then my next row, which is the middle row, I have a half square triangle away from me. I have a four patch, my, my background gray color facing away from me. And then another half square triangle. This one now faces towards me. Then the next row is a four patch again with my background away from me. And then a half square triangle with my dark color facing towards me. So if you're laying this, it'd be towards yourself. And then my last four patch for this block with my background color facing away from me. So that's how it lays out. And I'm going to go ahead and move all this little stuff out of the way right here so that I can lay my other one down right here. Oops. Next to me. So I'm just going to put these two facing up and these two facing me. Oops. So essentially, we're just making a nine patch, and all of my background colors will always be facing up away from me when I lay the block out. So it makes it easier. Oops. Wrong way. All right. So let's sew the little block together. Now, this is just a little bit more complicated, but it, it works. Um, let me read some comments real quick while I'm still here. Okay, we had those bufferies. Hi, Sue Ann. She's here. It's buffering. You're asking about Rowena Iron, but like Donna Jordan's one. That's the one I want in the future is the Rowena. Um, the the big one that Donna Jordan uses. I like that Rowena. I like my little one, but, and you guys, I keep forgetting to call and see if Rowenta will replace it because of the broken handle. Um, good now, too stinking cute. I can see that framed on the wall. Mom and Pop got a really nice iron. Um, good idea. Missing. Understandable. They're messing with your business. Go ahead and vent. Yeah, it's not just my business. It's messing with children. That's my own personal opinion. Um, here, it, the cases for the coronavirus stuff. I don't want to get into that subject, but the cases for it is not very horrible at, at all. It's not like anywhere else. And it's the, when it comes to kids' cases, they're even less, 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 like almost none. So why can't kids go to school? If your kid's sick, keep your kid home. Isn't that the smart thing to do? If your kid has any kind of signs of being sick or feels super fatigued for no reason, keep your kid home. That would be even when there wasn't a virus. So there's me venting. Uh, so it's just messing with things because CJ can't, doesn't do online. Maxine doesn't have internet. It's like 
how are these kids, there's some kids out there that live in homes that don't have internet or can't afford it or whatever. And then they get paper packets, but nobody's there explaining because they can't Zoom with their teachers because they can't afford internet. Make sense? Okay, rant over. <laughs> Let's get back to these little blocks. So I'm going to separate them just a little like that, see, on here. And I'm also going to make sure that my... I forgot to zoom in. Sorry. So let's zoom in now. Just a little bit. Oops. Right there. So that you can see. Oops. Zoom back out just a little. I went too far. Alright. Can you see now? Okay, perfect. So what I'm going to do... So this is what you guys are seeing right now on the screen. This is my little nine patch. I'm going to take second row and put it over the first row and I'm not going to move or turn anything. I'm just going to pick it up and stick it on top very very carefully and I'm going to move these over. I'm going to pick up my first one because these are so small. They should be cut. You, you just trimmed them all to the exact same size. I'm going to do my scant quarter inch again. So I'm going to put my little chingamabobber down right here to stop me from going a regular quarter inch. I'm literally doing a scant quarter inch and I'm going to lay this down right here. Oops, stop. And I'm going to carefully sew across this. And I'm going to sew a little bit past so that it has a long tail. I'm going to grab that next set of two. They should already be right sides together. I'm going to slide these through. I'm going to sew a little bit past so I have some tail to work with. And then put number three in. I like to keep these together. So I'm going to move those out of the way, cut my thread, and I'm going to start by these are the seams that I do not press open. So I'm going to press this half square triangle and four patch section facing the four patch on this first part. Okay. And I'm going to use my finger for that. Then this next one I'm going to press towards the half square triangle, or I mean towards the four patch again from the middle row because I'm trying to get rid of the bulk. This helps it line up so much better. And then my third one, again, I'm pressing towards the four patch because it's getting rid of the bulk right here at these bottom and top corners of the, four, of the half square triangle since it is such a small block. All right, so now we're going to take this next one and put that right sides together. Leave a long tail. Grab the next one. Do not flip it. Just turn it right sides together and stick it on. Leave a long tail and grab that last one. You'll know that you've flipped or moved something if your piece is not facing away from you. If your background color is not facing away from you, then you know that you have turned or flipped your piece. So as long as you're putting it on facing away from you, then it should stay lined up the whole time. All right, so again, I'm going to press towards the four patch, just like this. And then again, I'm going to take the next one towards the four patch. So essentially it's away in away. And this last one again towards the four patch. This will help me nest at least those seams, even if my four patches are not correct or accurate, at least I will have the seams in between accurate. So now I'm just going to put these right sides together. Hold my little nested seams down now. Keep everything nice and flush and straight. And so my scant quarter inch. And then while I'm here, I'm also going to snip apart where my seams were held this, sec this section right here. So I'm just going to put it right sides together now because this one's done. I'll take this one right sides together. And you can snip that away now or later. It's just to help press the seam open when we get to the pressing part. So now they're not connected anymore, but 
that's okay because it's okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna line this up and sew down. And you can nest the seam perfectly, making every sure every making sure that everything stays. And then I'm gonna open it up right here. And I'm gonna open this seam. And press it. That's why I snipped those pieces apart, those threads, so that I had the ability to open the seam. And then after the seam is open, we'll go over to the iron and press the whole block really nicely, which will take me two seconds. Oh no, it won't because my iron has turned itself off again. All right, so I'm just going to go press this real quick. I'm going to lay it down nice and flat. I have some seams, lots of it. Go to the back, make sure that all my seams stayed the way I wanted them. And here it is. My mini Jacob's ladder block. And it's super flat, see? So the only seams, see that? I opened the final seam. But the other seams I pressed to the sides so that it helps the block lay flat. Instead of pressing them open, I was able to line everything up so that these were consistent right here. I mean, they're not perfect, obviously, you can tell. But So there it is. So let's put that other one together to give me block number four. All right, so again, I'm just going to bring it up towards me. So I got these, like this, these three pieces, and these three pieces, just like that. Again, I'm going to put all these right sides together to know that I have it all correct. My, my four patches all face away from me, and two of my um, half square triangles, the dark faces away from me, and then the dark faces close to me on the next two. So let's just run these through in a row, and I'm going to leave a bit of a chain in between them. Like that. That allows me to flip them because they are so small. The smaller they are, the bulkier they feel when you're doing this. So. And last little one for this row. Okay, now I'm going to open it up and press it towards my four patch. Towards my four patch for the middle one. And towards my four patch for the last one. All right, let's put the last row on, so right sides together. Again, I'm going to chain between them so they're not tight. Put this right sides together. And last row, last square, right sides together. And now, finger press towards the four patch. Finger press towards the four patch. Again, out, in, out. Always towards the four patch. Because these are so small, those half square triangles will make quite a bit of a disaster. So now that I have it all hooked together, I can't lose my little pieces. We're going to go right sides together. They are nested now, if you see. Very nicely nested. So let's keep those together, nested nicely. Line everything up, sew it on through. Everything's sitting so beautifully. You don't need any pins, it just sits so nice. Again, I'm using a scant quarter inch seam. And I don't need to press this, I'm going to open that seam, but I do need it out of my way. So we're going to go right sides together now with this set. We're going to nest these seams. And again, you can pluck that um, stitch out before sewing. Or you can um, 
wait to do it right before you paint. Um, open the seams. So here we go. We're going to turn this upside down. I'm kind of like nicely opening this up a little. Oops, let's split that real quick. So I'm just splitting the thread that held these is together as chain pieces. I'm going to do it on both. I'm just running it in between the seams so it'll catch it with my little snips. All right. So now I'm going to finger press this with my fingers and then use this little tool. Kind of just pushing some pressure down in the areas where it's bulky. Open this one up. missing a lot of your um, comments I know but I'll get to them as soon as I press this because now I'll be able to sit down so here's another one let me press this real quick I'm just gonna do it off the camera Now I can actually turn my iron off. So here's my next block. All right, now let's zoom out. Okay. Turn you facing me. Okay. So here's my four little blocks. So I have four little Jacob's Ladder blocks. They can be laid however you want to lay them. When I lay mine out, I will be laying them this way probably. <laughs> so that every other color is together. Let's see if I can put it on something to hold it up so you can see. They make three and a half inch blocks, three inch finished. Oops. This is how I'm going to be laying mine out probably when I finally get to all of them or as many as I can get made. So that's probably how I'm going to lay these out. Ah, stay, stay. I just want to show you guys. I think this will look so super adorable. Sorry, they're kind of crooked now. <laughs> oh, I tried to lay it nicely on a magazine. Hold the bottom two and hold the top two. There we go. What do you guys think? So I'm going to be making a mini quilt to hang on the wall with Jacob ladder blocks. Because they're so super stinking cute. <laughs> I love them. So as you can see, even with lollygagging around, it took me, lollygagging around even, it took me an hour to make two blocks. And it took me almost an hour to make the other two. So about 45 minutes to make two blocks at a time. I know it's so time consuming. Oh, here's another way you can lay them out, by the way. I know you guys probably can tell from here. There we go. Um, so yeah, they, they take a little bit of time because they're so tiny. And me, you guys know I'm a speed demon. I, I, I get things done. But these little ones, you have to take your time and, and just take your time. <laughs> so they're so much fun. Um, they are definitely so stupor, stupor. They're super cute. They are super cute. They're super cute. Um... It's going to make for a nice little mini quilt, and it's adorable. <laughs> so let's see what's in the comments before I get off of here, since now I've been on here for an hour. I knew it would take an hour, guys. I told you it would. All right, let's see. I'm totally, totally, totally missing comments here. All right, understandable. I can see the back. Okay, buffering. Okay, that's not buffering no more. It's going to be fairly Chicago. <laughs> Uh, called Coke in the Fridge. Little tiny baby blocks. Yep. Sound 
Coke sounds so good. I don't drink soda, guys. Did you guys know that? I've never, I don't ever drink soda. Um, there's been a couple times that I had to take a sip because I needed some wetness in my mouth, but it takes me a minute to swallow it because it burns, absolutely burns my throat. So I don't drink soda. I don't drink, um, uh, soda. I don't drink any soda or, um, energy drinks or anything like that. Anything that has a fizz or bubbly to it, I don't drink it. They teach. Uh, I watched a video where they dipped spools of thread in mineral oil, mineral oil, let us suffer 30 minutes. Ever heard of this? Uh, ever heard of this or tried it? No, I have not, Lisa. I'm never heard of it. Uh, there is thread stuff. Uh, thread oil but I wouldn't want to run an oil through the machine you'd think it would mess the tension up I think that would be for hand sewing honestly because I have um, a wax that I use for hand sewing that Kim sent me so that I can hand sew um, Nina I have daycare kids here trying to help them it's a mess yes it is uh, poor man sewing tried it and it didn't work no, what is it supposed to do? Relax the thread, I guess. Interesting. Lubricate thread moves easier through the machine with less lint. She used Aurifil, but uses it on all her cotton threads. Interesting, because to me, I would think an oiled thread, once it's dry, it would probably break easier. Th that's just my own personal opinion, because I play with thread and use it a lot. And secondarily, if you were to run it through your machine while it has the oil on it, I would think that it would want to spin quicker through your tension discs. Um, I, I just think it would want to spin quicker and it would cause tension issues. Uh, that's personal opinion. I don't know because I've never tried it, but that's just how I feel because I see that happening. I see it getting ruined. Um, and then secondary to, to that, you would have oil on all of your stuff because it's on the thread so that oil is going to seep through that's why i like some of the more lint free threads they like glide is virtually lintless like um every once in a while i have a, a pile of dust like these are consistently dusty these have so much dust um because they are cotton and yeah these make a mess but the the glide when it's on my long arm of all the threads I've tried on the long arm, the glide is the less, the one that I clean the less. I don't ever have to really clean anything. I mainly have to clean dust from being in the garage off of it before I clean it from the thread. And there's a ton of other brands that are like that, so. Um, Sue and Feather, you can ask Sandy sewing dock machine or something like that and she swore no fabric stains hmm um let's see need to see when i freshly oil my machine uh like the long arm i freshly oil the bobbin and this i oil the bobbin casing it always gets on my fabric so i test it on fabric um scraps first or on the side of a quilt when it's on the long arm because i don't want that oil on the quilt just cute not sure I want to try it but hey if it's on the internet right <laughs> oh, use old thread and fabric and see I don't have any trouble with my thread but if I did I'd try anything uh, you have inspired me to if I want to make little blocks so aren't they these are like you just start with little one inch squares I mean some people might think this is small and the scraps from trimming it I mean this is less scraps than any other project when trimming I mean I mean if you did it more accurately you wouldn't have to trim but I'm doing a scant quarter inch to make sure everything is lined so that's where the whole trimming comes in play I think it's a little bit more accurate especially since I'm doing tiny blocks it the tr the scant quarter inch and the trimming like I said this is never going to be washed I mean if it is it's gonna be flung on the clothesline or something to get the dust off of it or vacuumed but it shouldn't fall apart for stuff like that but it's not going to have consistent washing but if you look there is plenty of seam plenty plenty of seam so I mean in reality you could make a ton if they take 45 minutes to do two you could spend you know six months 
<laughs> once a day for 45 minutes a day making enough of these blocks to make a big quilt I can only imagine how much work that would be I'm just gonna make a small one but um, you could make a big huge quilt that's a lot a lot a lot of time but it the trimming and all that I think is a good amount of time I don't think the time was wasted because I have a way more accurate block they are sitting right now at three and a half inches yep three and a half exactly like on the dot even with my um, scant quarter of an inch sealing it off because of the way I trimmed everything it works out perfect so yeah I would say try it try it once make one block you know it, it's a coaster if you make just one you know <laughs> so yeah and you can make them any size you want you can change these numbers out so if you wanted to use one and a half inch squares to start then you would need um, one two so you would need a two inch half square triangle right yeah a two inch half square triangle so and I'm using one and a half inch half square triangles because I'm making one and a half inch four patches so too small for you Vicki I I like my scraps I like to make things with scraps so I'm enjoying it definitely um, awesome too small for me well it's okay to, to admire small quilts they have a specific part of quilt shows if any of you've been to a quilt show there's specific sections and entry areas for specific size quilts they have tiny quilts like they are small I, they were smaller than this I don't know how they got them that small because one inch would be two I mean three quarters of an inch would be folding a seam over a seam so one inch gives you plenty of space for those seams to sit and if you use a scant quarter inch you have eh, you know a tiny tiny bit of room in between everything you know like literally a sliver I, I could have I couldn't imagine using three quarters of an inch for anything like this that just that is cutting it close on the too small for my shaky hands and I could imagine on a bad bad day I wouldn't even be able to attempt this so it's not for everybody but they are cute and you can admire them and quilt shows have a special section where you can just look at walls of just tiny quilts people making such tiny tiny blocks like Jacob's ladder block to make a tiny quilt it's just adorable <clears throat> it doesn't dry out it really helps when doing free motion quilting okay I'd love one sewn on my jean pant leg if you're uh, quilted real good it should wash well enough yeah I think so I thought oiling the thread was interesting. She referenced free motion quilting. Okay. All right. Well, I'll have to look into it myself. I've never, I've never oiled my thread. I, I put grease on it or uh, wax, I should say, for hand sewing, but I've never oiled it. That's just my own thought process of how it would run through the machine, I guess. I don't know. I'd have to watch the video. Anyways. All right, well, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me to make my little mini quilt blocks. Um, try it. I mean, everybody has little one-inch scraps. They always say, oh, I'm going to throw it away. They throw it away. Save a couple of them, enough to make one block, and see how it makes you feel, you know? Uh, any block at that. You could take and have instead just make half-square triangles and... Um, you know, uh, solid blocks, one and a half inch squares or whatever, one and a half inch square and then a really tiny one and a half inch half square triangle and so on, just to see how it makes you feel. And then if that is okay, then go down to the next size lower, which would be making half square triangles, or I mean, one inch, four patches, you know, one and a half inch, four patches out of one inch squares and see how that makes you feel, you know? And then if it, it's okay, then put it all together and look at that <laughs> and there's all sorts of different ways these can be laid out um, I'm trying to like think whoa yeah that way 
that's how I had it. So yeah, try it. See if you like it. This tutorial will be here, and those pause scenes will be hopefully messed out. I'm going to get off of here, though, guys. I appreciate you hanging out with me. I just don't want the internet to keep kicking off more if I was to keep going more. Plus, it's another 45 minutes to do, it, to do two more blocks. So um, I really appreciate everyone hanging out. Um, yeah, you can strip piece. I just saw that come through. You can strip piece one inch strips and then sub cut them into one inch sections and then put them together. That will work just as the same as, you know, doing it the way I did. So it probably might actually save some time. Who knows? All right. Well, thank you guys for joining. Love you all. And I will see you in my next video. Tiny, 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 tiny blocks. Oh, such cute little tiny blocks. Bye-bye.